Howdy everybody, working on the van today and just wanted to talk about the light bar in it. And you know, I call this thing the light bar, but it's really got a lot more functions than that. I mean, I did have some like very kind of specific ideas of what I wanted the light in this van to look like and what I wanted it to do, but it kind of morphed into this project where I've also got like my stereo wired into it. Um, I've got some other electrical controls wired into it. And then I had this idea about kind of having a, like a comfortable space to hang out in the evenings where I've got a projector. Um, to, you know, to essentially become a TV. So I, today I'd just like to talk about how I built this thing and all the kind of functions it has. So let's do that right now. So first let's talk about the aesthetics of these lights. Um, I kind of wanted this kind of just like kind of wide stripe kind of look all the way down the length of the van. Um, I didn't want the little string lights. Um, so I think that is kind of what I went for with these kind of diffusers I've got on these LED strips here. And more so than just like that warm white LED strip, I also have actually the red, green, and blue or like colored LEDs in here. Because I find often, you know, we'll be hanging out in the evening with some friends somewhere and it's nice to have an option that's between, you know, pitch black and like white LEDs. Like these white LEDs are on a dimmer, so that does help a little bit, but it's nice unless you just have some other color options. So later in the video, I'll talk about how I built this. That's gonna kind of be the very last part of the video, but it's got a pretty good look, I think, of having that kind of panel look I wanted. When you're actually in here in the van, the camera doesn't seem to be picking this up very well with the white light. But if we switch to the colored lights, like here, we'll turn this off for a second, and then we'll switch to the other lighting. You can kind of see, this is actually, it seems to be overemphasizing it on the colored LED look, because it's having trouble reacting. But you can see that there's only an LED strip, those red, green, and blue LEDs are only on one side. So you can see a little bit less of that with the red, green, and blue in real life. But then when we switch back to the white LED, you can actually see that a little bit more in real life here. It's not perfect, but it's kind of the look I wanted. And again, I'll give more details about how I built that later on in the video. Well, once I went down that red, green, and blue colored LED kind of rabbit hole, I remember a few years ago, I built a van for a friend and he had wanted lights that would kind of sync with his music. And at the time this product wasn't available, but now for less than 30 bucks, you can buy this little music controller and it will control your lights to kind of sync with whatever noise, or you can put a little line input into it and it will sync with whatever your stereo is doing. So that's what I ended up putting in this van. Um, it works about as well as you would expect the product for less than $30 to work. I think for a lot of kind of straight cut, like pop music, where you've got like a very definitive bass sound, I think it works okay. But for a lot of the music I like, uh, it's just, you know, it kind of, I think, gets a little confused as to what it's trying to react to. It's not perfect, but for a product less than $30, it's a fun little gimmick. Speaking of music, I really like having a hardwired kind of stereo system in my van. You know, I'm aware that there's a lot of just like great Bluetooth speakers out there. And honestly, even like a top of the line model would have most definitely been cheaper than what I've got invested into my, like the stereo deck as well as all the speakers and the subwoofer in here. That said, I like having just like one less thing that's kind of cluttering up my space. And the stereo I chose specifically has like an AM FM radio in it. And I find that's really nice. You know, when you're out camping, you can, you know, it's just nice to kind of have like that little bit of like a personal connection to kind of get some local radio. I really enjoy that. I've got an auxiliary connection to the side of the regular stereo here. And honestly, in like its upper levels, this thing is arguably like unhealthily loud, especially with that little subwoofer going. So. We've got plenty of volume. I think it sounds really good. And um, I'm pretty happy that I went the extra mile to get this thing wired in here. Other things up here are the control for the inverter, which I want it to be easy to access because we'll be using this basically every time we cook, we got to turn on our stove, we got to turn on our inverter. And on the forward side of this light bar, I've got what will be an AC outlet, although I haven't wired it in yet. Then I've got the Servo GX control. And then this is a USB outlet that I'll actually be replacing soon. And I'm going to be replacing it because the projector I'm running actually needs a specific USB-C like PD connection. And I thought that this blue C unit could power it, but it turns out I'm gonna have to sub it out for a different one. So that's on order right now and it'll hopefully be here soon. But for now, if I wanted to turn on my projector, I'd have to wire it through the AC plug. And I'm really hoping to be able to run my projector without having to turn on my inverter. So let's talk about this projector. You know, we do quite a bit of like winter traveling, especially for climbing sometimes where, you know, the days are short, the nights are cold. So you don't really want to be hanging out outside, you know, from 6 p.m. onwards. So in this van, 
kind of with this idea to have the sofa up front behind the driver's seat, I wanted kind of this nice hangout spot. So we've got the dual swivels in the front, we've got the sofa that can sit at least three people, and now we've got this projector that essentially just makes a nice area. We can just like kind of zone out and watch some TV and it doesn't take up a whole lot of room because it's basically kind of a seamless thing. I don't have to have a big TV installed or anything. So let's talk about how I pull this projector off and what I think makes it just a very nice and slick install. All right, so a projector needs a screen. And what I did here to make this happen is I've actually modified a shade from a company named uh, MCD. Now in the van, I've used their shades quite a bit for things like the ceiling fan cover. I like these because you know, they have removable covers, but again, it's like another piece of clutter kind of. But here, this thing's almost seamless. So I really like these MCD covers and they will advertise these. I think it's like roll up uh, screen door shades for RVs, but I've actually got them to make me some like ridiculously oversized ones that clearly would not work for just a little screen door in an RV. But I basically took one and I modified it and that is what the screen for my projector is. Now this thing originally came with that same black fabric, but they've got this energy shield fabric um, that you can get through either like TriVantage or a couple other sources on the internet. And it's got white on the inside and then the outside is actually this silvery material. So I think this makes a great window cover, you know, it keeps heat out when the sun is out and then it's just in like a nice white surface so that you can use it as a projector screen. And with that, I specifically chose this projector mostly because of its form factor. I think a lot of the other projectors you look at nowadays that have pretty good ratings, um, they're kind of more of like a big beer can shape. And I really like how this is just a small, slick little box so it can fit up here. Um, I'm gonna have to make a nice cradle for it. Currently, I've just got it kind of sitting on a stack of shims right here to get the angle right, but it's just a really small little unit. Um, and then to connect actually to my phone, I've got a Google Chromecast dongle. This has some built-in capabilities for like YouTube and such, but Honestly, I just find the Chromecast to be a lot, you know, you can do screen mirroring and stuff. So I just find that a lot more, a lot easier and better program. But yeah, this is the whole projector right here. Hopefully once I've got this USB plug replaced, I can just power it off the same USB plug. And it's just a great little projector. The fan on this thing is definitely a little louder than ideal. I find that like when you're actually watching something, you kind of zone out or, you know, whatever you're watching is actually making noise. So you don't hear that fan. But when it's just kind of idling up here and sitting, the fan and cooling fan on this is quite loud. So that is something to keep in mind. But I think for when you're actually watching, it doesn't matter too much. And then the other reason I chose this thing is because this is the cheapest Kodak projector that actually has the ability to zoom out or like change the image size. So to actually have the image not be too big from this distance, I've got this thing set to have 80%. This thing can't quote unquote zoom in but it starts you off at like a full size image and then you can reduce the size from there. So I've got it set to 80%. So it is framed well on that door projector right there. And then to play kind of, you know, through the rest of the speakers in the van that I've got installed through that stereo system, this thing can actually communicate via Bluetooth to my stereo. So that kind of makes, you know, one less cord. There's no auxiliary cable running over there. And that's about that. Um, I've got some footage now of how I built, you know, both this light bar a little bit, as well as this light bar over here. So if you've, just kind of want to get some ideas of how I pulled this off, you know, please stick around and watch that. But otherwise, you know, I'm very happy with how all this turned out. I think I've got a lot of kind of function between like the speakers and all the electrical controls and everything that's integrated into these light bars, as well as just like a nice little cubby so you can just like store small items up here. So um, thanks everybody for watching and uh, stick around if you want to see some more kind of build footage. Thanks guys. All right, so these light channels are probably a little over-engineered, but I kind of wanted this look just gonna have this white like diffuser bar and I'm using this actually kind of opaque plastic that I purchased off of Mac Master as my diffuser. And that, if you look at the profile of this thing, and let me just pause here really quick to talk about the construction and the layers in this thing. This diagram right here, it is shown upside down. Um, you know, eventually the way this gets mounted, this bottom bar here ends up becoming the actual mounting surface. But essentially I built this thing out of three different layers. We've got that three millimeter level, that's kind of the backing plate that I ended up painting white. Then in the middle, we've got this 12 millimeter plywood layer that I ended up beveling at like a 45 degree angle. And then we've got the top six millimeter layer that's got that notch taken out of it so that you can end up sliding that diffuser in. 
Then when I mount the LEDs, they're at that 45 degree angle, so they're essentially shining into that white painted surface. And I had hoped that between that and then also the diffuser, it would scatter the light enough to just give a nice kind of solid bar look as you're looking up at that you know, assembly. And then on each side of this, I have a white LEDs on one side and my colored LEDs on the other. And I've painted the center part white, so it kind of reflects off that towards the diffuser. It's not quite as balanced as I had hoped. Like you can tell that the white is skewed to one side. There's only white LEDs on one side, um, but it looks decent. So what I do is I wrap the fabric, then I cut it back so I can wrap just a little bit of that fabric back into this channel. And after that's done, I slide the diffuser in. Um, but anyways, a little bit over-engineered, but it is a fun project. And, you know, I just get into these things where once I know I can build it, I decide to do it, whether it's truly purposeful or not, so. There was quite a bit of planning done to make sure the speakers and all the components cleared within these little spaces. And then on both the ends of the driver's side light bar, it took me quite a bit of like scrutinizing and thinking to kind of give that look that the lights are actually terminating into the speakers because I kind of wanted that seamless look. So a company for LED light strips that I've always had good luck with is Hit Lights. I'm sure that there's other brands that do just as well. And I'm sure some of them might even come off the same factory line in China. But for me, Hit Lights has not let me down. So I just continue to buy through them. I think all their lights here is kind of my box of scraps and stuff is, you know, over time they're just consistent and I like the quality I get through them. On these LED light strips, you can get all sorts of kind of like crimp connectors or they're not actually crimp connectors, but they're just like connectors you can get with them. Um, you know, and I've purchased a lot of them over time and I would say I've had terrible luck with all of them. I think at the end of the day, the best thing you can do is essentially solder them and then you use either conformal coating or some kind of adhesive lined heat shrink. And that I have found to be about the only way to have kind of a secure connection on them. All of these kind of connectors that you just open up and then pinch on the wire, I have not had good luck with, so I cannot recommend them. So highly recommend soldering the end of your LED light strips like this if you do need to change the length of them, which for almost any custom install you're going to have to do. Once the LED light strips are installed, I've had good luck using just hot glue around both the end of the LED strip so it doesn't start lifting, as well as around where the wire connection is. And I think this just helped both act as like strain relief and keep things secure to avoid any kind of chafing where the wire passes through the wood. Um, and I think the good thing about hot glue is in the end, it is also serviceable. So it is, you know, you can remove it if you do ever need to get in and rework this thing. Wrapping the fabric around these light channels, I just do what I standardly do, is I'm you know, pretty lucky to be able to have this set up to use 3M70 as my spray adhesive. You'll notice I have masked off the middle of the channels to avoid getting any overspray on the white paint. And after the fabric was attached, I would just trim down the center and leave a little bit of an overlap so I could wrap that over into those channels where the plastic diffuser will go. For the actual light diffuser, I ended up using this uh, three inch wide high density polyethylene HDPE from MacMaster. A uh, roll of I think 25 feet or however much I bought of this was quite cheap. And I ended up purchasing a few different plastics and I thought this was the closest to the look I wanted. So that's what I ended up using is this HDPE kind of plastic strip from MacMaster. The plastic material I used worked really well to just slide into the channel. If you do look really closely though, you will see that that plastic still has a little bit of like deflection from the curl or like roll it came in. I hope over time that relaxes and this might just be one of those things that only I'll ever notice in the van. And here's a final food for thought. So this wood piece does have a gap in it and this will be evened out just a little bit because I'm gonna have kind of a spacer foam piece here. But this piece of the fuser is continuous to kind of give that nice continuous look all the way down. But in order to pull this off, the wiring for these two halves is actually on the outside portions. Essentially, where the light transitions to a wire, there's gonna be a little bit of a light gap here. So if I had run those wires both through here, which would have been easier, just kind of where the light strips runs up, then I would have had a little bit of a light gap here. So I kind of wanted that just nice, even light look. So I've actually, for this half of it, both lighting wires drop in through there and for this half of it they both drop in through there and that way in the middle if you don't notice this gap once it's evened out this will just look like a nice and totally flawless or seamless kind of light so that's the look i was going for anyways thanks again for watching you know a bunch of little details in this that hopefully you found some of them interesting thank you